So we can just settle in and arrive. Feel our connection with spirit. With our inner being. That's all we're here to join with. Truth within. We're here to relax. Relax and reconnect. Just keep breathing, keep going deeper. Just release the thoughts about anything in form, anything about time can be forgotten for a while. As the mind wakes up to true identity, there is a lot of stuff to go through. There is a shock that comes to those who learn their savior is their enemy no more. This is a line from Jesus, there is a shock that comes to those who learn their savior is their enemy no more. Shock. Shock is intense. There's a shock that comes Those that realize that their savior is their enemy no more. Realize that your brother is yourself. It's a shock. And this shock can do a lot of things. You may want to keep the belief that there is an enemy outside, that your brother is different from yourself and can have his own thoughts that can hurt you. So this shock is what we're dealing with on the awakening journey. the resistance
the unwillingness to accept yourself, the unwillingness to accept your brother as yourself, your sister as yourself. The desire to play small, the desire to hide in some stories, in some scenarios, maybe where you think you are needed or responsible for something. That's very common. Instead of really accepting this profound truth about who you truly are, the body plays a big role. The body gets a lot of projections onto it. The body is very neutral. It's completely neutral. But the mind projects so much else onto it. It's not neutral to the deceived mind. This is what we can read in the course. The body, innocent of goals, is your excuse for variable go goals that you hold and force the body to maintain. The body is your excuse for some goals you hold and force the body to maintain. You do not fear its weakness, but its lack of strength or weakness. So why would he say this? You don't fear its weakness, but its lack of strength or weakness. I think often most of us project that the body has some weakness and we have to make it stronger. Maybe we have to exercise. We have to move. We have to get the heart rate going in the morning. You know, certain beliefs about the body is weak. But he's saying you're not actually really afraid of that the body is weak. You're afraid of the body's lack of strength or weakness. You're afraid of the body's lack of meaning, the body's lack of life. Mm. Because life is not of the body or in the body. I mean, this Jesus literally says the body is either anticipated or remembered. It's not experienced right now. It does not exist in the present moment. And the world, too, <laughs> does not exist in the present moment. And this is the fear, the lack of strength or weakness, the lack of life in form. But let's face that fear. How relaxing that there is no life in form. Form can be used as symbols to awaken the birds chirping. They feel like a doorway to peace. Or just this moment, this breath, this. This peaceful moment that where nothing is requested or required. It 
it's helpful to see everything as symbols and not real in and of themselves. Symbols are openings for awakening, for true life. And this he asks next here, would you know that nothing stands between you and your brother? Would you know? Would you want to know? Or do you want to push that away? The fact that nothing stands between you and your brother? Nothing stands between you and your brother. <laughs> nothing. No time. No space even. No form. No hurt. Nothing. How interesting. So the mind must have had some weird thoughts that it didn't want and said, it's in that one. It's in that one. It's in those. <laughs> and, and projected these other bodies. To get rid of something. But that something isn't real. The bodies aren't real. That's why the Course says forgive, 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 forgiveness, transcendence, release it. Would you know that nothing stands between you and another? Would you want to know this secret, the secret you've kept from yourself? Would you know there is no gap? behind which you can hide. Would you know this? So what is this gap? What happened? So this gap is your own personal story. A little dream. The world became a hiding place. But these little stories rule the life story. If you're a man or a woman, the circumstances you're in, family members, lack of friends or family members, however it looks, is this gap where the ego mind hides. Would you know there is no gap where you can hide? Would you know that this is not real? Would you know it's a dream? This is the invitation to to realize, to know that it is a dream. To reconnect with truth, to forgive the dream, the illusion, the projections. You know exactly what you projected you see it, you, you can connect with it by connecting with how you feel and what you think. 
do you think about others? How you see them? That's your projection. That's very easy to connect to. Should be, right? Because it's right there in the thoughts. It's, the projection says it's out there in them, but but that's not true. And, and that would make it forever impossible to fix. You couldn't change someone else. You couldn't change something that's outside. And that's part of the ego's plan. So it's in them. So therefore, you don't have to fix it, but yet you're at the mercy of something that they do. You know. Power is inside. To forgive, transcend everything, everyone. And to take responsibility, to, to take the steps you need to take for awakening, for your healing. Jesus says that the, the time you take is up to you. But why delay? Why delay if you know, if you know your calling? Why would you want to delay? Why would you want to dream one day more, one day longer, one minute longer, if you don't have to? Why would you want to hide? It's hiding place. It's not that fun. So yeah, would you know there is no gap behind which you can hide? There is a shock that comes to those who learn their savior is their enemy no more. This is the shock I talked about. There is a wariness that is aroused by learning that the body is not real. Wariness. And there are overtones of seeming fear around the happy message, God is love. There are overtones of fear. When we realize that God is love. That God is not an enemy that will strike us, strike us dead. <laughs> punish us or make us sacrifice. That's a huge belief that we need to overcome, this belief in sacrifice. Belief that we have to give up something for God. Yet all that happens when the gap is gone is peace eternal. Nothing more than that and nothing less. Without the fear of God, what could induce you to abandon him? What toys and trinkets in the gap could serve to hold you back an instant from his love? Toys and trinkets in the gap. The stuff we occupy our minds with. So what could hold you back? anymore when you realize that God is love that you are that love would you allow the body to say no to heaven's calling are you not afraid to find a loss of self in finding God so here it's explained the fear of loss of self. That's the fear we'll come across as we go deeper. The fear of loss of me. Yet can yourself be lost by being found?
so we can know this intellectually and knowing this intellectually can help us to face this fear of loss of self that's a good step to realize even if it's just intellectually that our self cannot be lost by being found because the other self in this world is just fake false plastic illusion it's it's fabricated what its aspects the persona There is no loss in losing that because that brings yourself to you and makes you find self. And I felt this shock that he's talking about. And it took different forms at different times for me. Just at times feeling very lost, confused. And there were moments of terror too. These are like passages that we can move through just to have enough trust that what we get on the other side is just what we want. It's just what we truly value. It, it is peace of mind. But there can be that shock and we may want to grasp for the past. Try to hold on to what we think is safe. People or situations, surroundings. But once we're ready, those things are not going to feel safe anymore. Those things will not offer what we thought they offered in the past. The safety of routines or rituals or traditions. That will be gone once the mind has matured to a certain point and if we reach back to it, we'll just feel more confused will just feel very strange to play that, that game. Yeah, let's take another deep breath and and say we can say inwardly I'm willing for my next step. I'm willing to release what I have to release to find the peace of God. I don't want to perceive a gap between me and my sister or brother. I want to know truly.
and talking about our stuff can be very healing. Confession comes to mind. Admitting stuff that we feel guilty for or shameful about. We watched Hello God, it's me, Margaret. And there's a scene there where because the girl is confused about religion because her dad is a Jew and her mom is also Christian. She's not anymore, but the girl has been told that she can choose her own religion. But her grandparents are fighting, so she she starts she doesn't like religion if that makes people fight. And she has friends who have different religions, and one girl is a Catholic, goes to confession, and she follows her. And she's just kind of bullied her a bit. She goes into the confession booth, and she says to the priest, I've done something terrible. And then she just runs out. She doesn't say more than that. There's guilt, you know, it's protecting what we think we've done to another. And that's heavy, that's painful. So let's confess. We can have a confession session. Sometimes we have expression session, you know, but can, you know, it can be a helpful thing to, to admit if we haven't admitted things we feel ashamed about and guilty for. We need to find someone we trust and talk to. And yeah, these sessions are great, you know, it's very safe. If you don't want it to be shared with the public, just let us know. But we can talk here about anything close to the gap. Confessing, expressing, releasing. Sharing. Yeah, if there's somebody here who's dealing with something that you'd like to Put on the altar. Also. Yeah, putting on the altar, yes. I I got so surprised now when you spoke that I could really feel it like very strongly how I I don't, I want to keep it, you know, I want to keep the, the me, I want to choose, I want this, I don't want that, and I felt it so strongly, and yeah, the fear of, of this other thing that I say I want, but now once I face, <laughs> I see the opposite, I see everything that I don't want to give up, you know, because what happens to this me then? <laughs> What's the point? So, yeah, I felt it this. I mean, I started crying and I felt tense and more pain and resistance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that with pain, because if the body's neutral, where is the pain? What? Where does it come from? Mm. The pain is stronger now, too. Mm. Yeah, it's... Um, and it's so great because, you know, I had a flash of it yesterday that you, I've been so much more forgiving for everything that keeps coming up in me. So I can drive the car and then something feels different. 
<laughs> and then I just let it rip, you know. So it's there for 20 seconds. I have no idea what it was even. And then it's gone. So mm-hmm. I'm just, you know, allowing it. And I don't go into a story. Sometimes I have the temptation to understand, you know, or or just the question, what, <laughs> what, 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 what was this? But I'm, I'm so much more forgiving. And because I, I know that something in me is is aware of it, you know, that place of, and I'm, I'm, I'm so much more forgiving myself for choosing the, this whole ego thing <laughs> over and over and over. Um, that step is so beautiful because then I take away the judgment. I don't fight with it. And then it's just, mm-hmm. it, sometimes it's so quick, you know? Yeah. So that's lovely. Uh, but now I, I still feel the pain and there's still a resistance and I didn't like some of the stuff you said. <laughs> mm. You know, no. Confessing. What for... about me? It, it, I had this picture, you know. No, it's like trying to ex- escape in all ways. And, and yeah, so that's where I'm at. Yeah, it's like... You know, if you were dry, drowning, it's like trying to stay on the surface of the water because you think, God, the ocean mm. is going to kill you. Yeah. And the other day when I was meditating, it also came to me so strongly that, no, I don't want this. No. No, this moment is not okay. No. <laughs> it's like, I, 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 yeah, so... Yeah, and seeing is key. Seeing mm. the seeing the resistance mm. and realizing surrender is peace. Why fear surrender? Why fear letting go? Mm. Can yourself be lost by being found? What is it that you let go of? Me, me wants. Me wants, yeah. <laughs> and what is that? It's false. It's. <sighs> you like preoccupation, responsibility, busyness, planning for the future. Yeah, I just want to get rid of the bad stuff, you know. (laughs) 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 Exactly, that's how it is. I want it really to get rid of all those things. (laughs) Oh, my God. (sighs) Yeah. And here, trust is important. Trust that you will have what you need, what you believe you need. No, I don't trust because this voice keep coming in and, and, and it's just, I'm, it's, I, I speak like it's something else, but it's me judging, you know, mm. my whole thing, this, everything. Supposed to be better, different. Supposed to be more peaceful. In the form. Well, the form should be more peaceful. Yeah. yeah. And what I'm sharing now is pretty much sums up what goes on, you know. That's what I'm seeing, Mark. That goes on all the time. There are moments where it's not at all there, but... And I'm very glad I'm I'm seeing it and spitting it out here and... I don't feel so wrong. (laughs) I don't judge myself at the moment so much. A little bit, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's good to let God in on our plans. <laughs> of course, I want help to not. Like Jesus, Jesus says, he says that we must see it with him. Because if we don't see it and, and see it with him, there is no way he could. I don't really understand. The words is that he could, that it could be yeah. given away. But he can help you out but if yeah. you let him in on it. Yeah, because it's forgiveness is, is right there. If, but yeah. I must be willing to face it and see it. Yeah. With him. So where is he then? Yeah, he, he is available. Yeah. But yeah, when you let him, when you let Jesus spirit in on your plans, on your ideas and beliefs. Holy Spirit's voice is as loud as your willingness to listen. It's a nice message, you know. That was lovely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you see the places where you haven't been willing to listen. See the places where I don't forgive it. I don't forgive myself, you know. The other day, my memory of being with you and David Hofmeister in Australia came back so strongly and I was, <clears throat> I kept hearing and feeling this innocent when I was, you know, and it was a place of just perfect happiness that I lived in for 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 a very very long time. But the word innocent kept coming back all the time, and I was thinking about it the other day. This innocent that I was experiencing so strongly, where is it? You know, what is it? innocent? Innocent of of what? But it's innocent of all this, you know. Yes. Yeah. The, all the darkness and and totally knowing that I am not all that and yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful yeah but I come and go I don't feel it all the time I get it yeah but I have beautiful flashes, and that's when it's like, then everything is forgiven. Yeah. It's almost like the innocence is on the other side of that me, the defending me yeah. feeling. And I've been wanting to talk to you about all this for a long time now. And I'm so glad you're here. Mm. That feels beautiful. The pain is really strong. <laughs> the pain is just some fear. And the dizziness is also very full on. Innocence. Dizziness. Dizziness. Innocence. In a few flashes. <laughs> but the dizziness is more constant. <sighs> yeah, as you're sharing, I, I keep thinking about this experience I had many years ago of 
of just deeply, deeply praying to, to know God's will and to do God's will. And I, I went into this meditation. It was by the deepest meditation I've ever experienced at that point. And, and I really, I really offered everything like no, no conditions, no, no holdouts to this willingness. And it led me to see an image of a knot untying. And I knew that that symbol meant to leave the marriage I was in at the time. But it was this willingness to do whatever, whatever was guided, no conditions. And it wasn't always easy. I mean, that led to a lot of emotions, a lot of big things in me, but I, I trusted, I listened and I followed. I just feel bad for you. Yeah, it can be the way spirit works, you know. You can ask for a, what is my next step? There's only one word that keeps coming up. It's forgiveness. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. That is the next step. And the pain is going away then. And last time we spoke, or any some time we spoke, but I've been thinking about it a lot because I felt so liberated. You know, I told you the story that I went to do some affiliate marketing business and I did it for yeah, uh, 10 months and I really went for it and sort of, you know, yeah, anyway. And and uh, and I was sharing it with you guys and, and you, Barrett, said, basically, you know, you're, you're, Jesus just says that you are welcome to do as many <laughs> things that you think you need or that you want you know it's all there is no judgment and I felt so forgiven you know for because there was something there and when you said that I just felt I could hope this be something is still there otherwise I wouldn't cry or I said Maybe it's just beautiful to be forgiven, you know? I don't know. <laughs> but thank yeah. you. Both. There's nothing wrong. It's all, you know, it's all, <laughs> it's all for the good <laughs> or however you want to say it. If I, mm -hmm. if I can. Mm -hmm. Feel that and be forgiving for myself, for choosing the world or wanting you know, to create a better economy or whatever I was on, on to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus is sometimes very clear on, it's like, you know, we are gods. We, we are God's um, creation. We belong to God. And when we want to try something else, sometimes we don't succeed, you know, mm -hmm. especially if we have a strong calling for the truth. Mm -hmm. I spoke to someone here yesterday because she she wanted to become an actress mm -hmm. and she seemed to fail. Like, pretty drastically and and 
shared with her I I wanted to become a physician mm. and I was like so close to, mm. to coming into the, the program and because in Sweden maybe you know you need you know the top grades but that year they did an experiment and they would let the ones who was just under the top grades come in for an interview and that was me Oh. and I came in for an interview and after the interview they put me at the end of the waiting list the end we were like I was part of the 10 that were at the end I was oh. uh, there was over 100 people and I was part of the and at the end of the waiting list to to get into the program and I thought the Holy Spirit made this so clear that it's not for me. It's mm -hmm. not my journey to succeed as a physician, to become somebody in the world, to strengthen a self-concept. Mm -hmm. You know. So yeah, sometimes we try and fail. And, yeah. But we're actually saved. <laughs> we're saved, yeah. We're protected from nature. <laughs> <laughs> And when we're open to the signs, we, yeah, we can receive them. We can receive the message in it. I just remember now, I actually had the weirdest dreams last night. And it's exactly, you know, the, the leader of the whole pack, this multimillionaire guy who really wants, you know, he really wants people to succeed because if they succeed, he succeeds. So it's basically, you know, a person win-win. Anyway, I had this dream <laughs> about him tonight, not, not in a romantic way, but just, you know, very lovingly. And I, and I, ne I never remember my dreams even, but now I remembered I had that. And we were just, yeah, just love. <laughs> <laughs> you forgave him. <laughs> yeah, probably. It cost it costed a lot of money, you know. So yeah. <laughs> <sighs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. And even put it to words. It's so means so much. Mm. Let's connect on a call soon. Yeah. Love you guys. Love you. <laughs> you're not really in Sweden. You're you're right here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anybody else? Hi. Hi, good to see you. Same to you. Um, I want to share my this week um, process. Uh, it started uh, on Sunday. Uh, I was uh, seeing my mother. And uh, uh, suddenly, she she started to look very ugly, so ugly. <laughs> I have never seen people to to be so ugly. And that I I saw that that is some something <laughs> the beginning of some process. And then I I went out, and the same same thing happened to all people. Everybody looked so ugly and disgusting that I, I started to cry and I felt like vomit coming to my throat. It was so terrible experience. And and I feel that this is about the same thing that you were talking today, that, 
that I saw so clearly that pro projections, these projections I have to uh, my brothers and sisters, that, that it was so, <laughs> I even saw, saw that ugliness. And then um, I have been all week so, I have so angry that I had, I had, I have been releasing hate all the time. And um, it looks like that it's a huge amount of hate between me and others. And it looks like it, how, how can I ever release that, that much hate that it all goes away? Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for lifting that up. Yeah, it will, you know, I know the feeling. I know it can feel like never ending. Hatred or anger, rage, frustration. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just to keep going, you know, it is, it is washing through, you know, that's what you're allowing. Imagine how much hatred there is in this universe. You know, it is it is the outpicturing of hatred, of the ego's hatred for God. You know, and then it, but the whole plan requires that it's disguised. There are nice points. There are good aspects, you know, the things we, we like, you know. But that's a disguised hatred. That's that's the separation from God. Also in the yeah, in that. So that willingness that you have to release it, it's beautiful. To that open, honest looking, you know, you don't blame yourself. You didn't blame yourself from fear for feeling hatred or, or the ugliness. You you're innocently, openly looking at it. And that's really, you know, that because often the ego wants to hide because of shame. You want to hide the ugly thoughts. And that makes it harder. That just removes the possibility of healing one more step away. Yeah. But usually, as you see it, it's gone, right? Even if it comes back later. But yeah. Because Jesus says, How beautiful those who you forgive will look to you. Can you imagine how beautiful the ones you forgive will look to you? He says. So I think that ugliness is the start of that. Because it's been hidden. You probably have not seen, you said, never seen your mom look so ugly. <laughs> so it's just a sign you let it up. You know, it's been under the surface for. Maybe it's a lot coming with it, like allowance to not play a role, to play the daughter, not feel constricted or restricted in a role. I cheer you on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Beautiful. So do we have any more shares here? Any more admissions? <laughs> Admitting. <laughs> Peter. So when you spoke about the shock, the shock that comes when you realize that your brother is your savior. 
There is a shock that comes to those who learn their savior is their enemy no more. Yeah. How, does, how does that relate for you? About 10 days ago, I was feeling very connected with Solvay and for quite a period. And then um, Jonas's share, well, that really triggered me into some past hurt with Solvay. And it brought up rage and hatred that's been in and out of since then. And then two days ago, I just asked her, um, I was lying in bed and I asked her to come in and lie with me. And I said I wanted to share something with her. And I said to her that I hated her. I don't, I, there were other things, I don't remember everything I said, but she, she just actually didn't react. And um, then came, up came, I knew there's something important to share. Up came um, actually a lot of pride, intense pride. I don't know if I was willing to apologize or, I, I didn't actually want to share anything. The pride was so strong, but I, I continued with it. And it came se several times and it, it was like, a, almost like some demonic <laughs> kind of dark. Um, that was it. I remember I, this felt like an invitation to let go of this grievance with Solvay. That was it. And I could feel I wanted to, but I also felt like I, I couldn't. If, if, if I did that, I would be wrong about everything. And, and that's, a, that's pride speaking. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, and I, and I could see that and I could see it was an opportunity. I thought uh, this could be immense opportunity. And it, it, it has felt like a long time, quite a long time resisting God. When you were speaking earlier, I could relate to this intense fear. So did you confess? Did you allow? Well, what is coming up now? <laughs> what came up a few minutes back was the shame. The shame I feel for loving God. <laughs> like I don't want to show that in public. Hmm. Does that make sense? Not really. Maybe you could try to show. <laughs> yeah, I can I can feel that I mean, like if I do that, then everything I've ever believed in is wrong. What's the point? Yeah. I've been here before. There was a stubborn part of me that, I don't know. What, why did I say I love you, God? I don't know. Just, I, I don't want to repeat. Thanks. I think it's beautiful that you love God. And it sounds beautiful that Solve gave you a chance to look at what came up. That she didn't buy into it or bite on it. It was beautiful. And I was I was grateful for that. Yesterday wasn't like that. So. 
<laughs> yeah, it feels, yeah, just, I was sort of looking at you and looking at everybody and I was thinking actually you will love me. <laughs> <laughs> that feels difficult. <laughs> well, I think it's great to connect with you and that you open up about the love of God and the process you've been in. It's, yeah. And the invitation keeps being there every moment, you know, to be so honest with yourself that you can release whatever is there and then feel that love for God. Well, it feels like a self-hatred. Mm -hmm. Just as I said that about receiving all this love. That's what it is. That's all that's in the way. It's the self-hatred. Yeah. And then that's, you know, even though I've been I've been holding on to this, this story that badly treated, but I felt differently with Solvay, with myself. I had I had a respite. I had um, I felt loving with her. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And you can just keep Having the prayer, you know, is because this message, the shock that comes when you see that your brother, your 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 wife, <laughs> your sister is your enemy no more, you know, that your savior is your enemy no more. The prayer can be, wow, let me let me know what that means. Let me yeah. heal what in the way of that experience because yeah it can be some day yeah i did that with my father that feels easier hmm. yeah it's generally not as easy to do it with the ones you surround yourself with in the present moment you know the current relationship but to do it there too yeah the forgiveness. Yeah. This sense of it's all an illusion. I just had to park that up over there because I just couldn't couldn't really grasp it. And for a while that's been arising in me again. And and I I I, I think I believe it. Well, these are little, little bits of evidence that telling me that I'm the river is getting closer to the ocean. Uh, it feels a bit intense. I, and I don't understand why I should fear God. Deep yeah, it's not understandable. It's not, uh, it's never going to be understandable. This is not really even possible, but it seems possible. It seems there is a fear of God. Yeah, it's just being loved just brings up the unworthiness. Yeah. And that's just another way you fear God. It's unworthiness. Something very circular about it all. Yeah. And this can be a way of, you know, we can even use this to ask ourselves, how do I fear God right now? What is the feeling? What is the projection? What is the, what have I put in the gap? You know, that's something we all can use in our minds. Just, but in what way do I fear God right now? How does my dream look? What, how does it look in my mind? What is here? 
Yeah, unworthiness, the self-hatred, the hatred of others. I mean, there's the longing there. Maybe I don't have to go through all this unworthiness. I mean, it's just been there forever. Maybe it's just okay. It's all okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's all okay. It's, it's God's okay. <laughs> we had Grace on a call the other day. She has this song. It's all okay. okay. It's Ethan? all okay. okay. You... If I trust. Trust, 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 trust. It's all okay. okay. It's happening for me. <laughs> and I no, can. I've seen her sing it. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's it. You know, you have felt unworthiness forever, you said. And, and it's just to, yeah, to question it, release it. Perhaps yeah. I don't have to feel all this unworthiness anymore, you said. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> you, you can release it when you feel it and trust because we have a great calling we're not you know be not content with littleness jesus says be not content with littleness we're never going to be content with littleness unworthiness you know this that's why there is so much under the surface, because we're trying to be content with littleness. But how can the Christ be content with littleness? The Christ wants to shine, and that's what you are. That is your true identity. You know, we you, you don't it's not gonna it's not gonna feel good to stay contained in littleness whatever form it takes it wants to shine and it's the truth for each and everyone talked about that here yesterday someone said i don't feel content with just being a collaborator one in the mix and i said yeah that's because you're the christ the christ is inside wants to shine the christ is greatness magnitude you know, you can read littleness versus magnitude in the course. Yeah, it comes to this point when we, we feel done, finished with littleness. We don't want to be stuck anymore. But then the fear can come in, but then give it over to Holy Spirit. Give it to God to show how, how you can shine, how you can let your Christhood shine through you know what what is the way what is the next step that is a very helpful sincere prayer like he says your acceptance of suffering can be quite big but it's not without limit it's gonna you know your acceptance for suffering acceptance of littleness is gonna you're gonna be done with it you're gonna feel at some point enough of this i want to shine i want to change i wrote to me i hear the word change i hear something there is something calling there is something new several people have actually written uh, to me and talked about it our call with you I could feel that there too this kind of bursting feeling of okay it's enough now, like that feeling. I'm fed up with with this illusion, you know, it's time. That's a beautiful prayer. Like spirit is really with us in that. Okay, what is what is my next step? Because while we believe in the world of form, steps are very useful, changes are helpful. So that's that's a helpful prayer. What is my next step? And I think, yeah, sometimes I can feel the vibe here for for you guys that it's time, <laughs> and you can 
make the prayer. It's time, Spirit. Show me my next step. Spirit doesn't hold, hold back or keep it away from you. So allow it. And we can explore together. We are very happy. We're good explorers. <laughs> join together on some calls and explore. Yeah. And I know it's been intense there in South Africa too, that sometimes when there is two together living in a small space, you know, sometimes, yeah, it's a pressure cooker. It's, it's a little volcano burst, you know, that starts to almost erupt sometimes. Because the mirroring the projection, it, it's can be intense. How is it going there? You've been staying together now for for a couple of weeks, or yeah, I don't really feel for myself any things. No eruptions, no. <laughs> Maybe in the beginning we had like two yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. This is a thought. Yeah, I had like an <laughs> eruption. <laughs> yeah, that was like the first day. Yeah, the first day yeah, I had a, I had like a anger outburst, projecting onto a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, that was quickly over. Like for and then yeah, after that we just yeah the joinings and speaking about you know about the core cool stuff. Yeah, I think like I feel like our ego is like very agreeable. Like not really. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's not much being there's not much being triggered here. We just we talk about uh, the core stuff and we meditate together. Yeah, after that, not much uh, reflections. I did express some stuff to Francho. My private forces comes up because of our sexuality differences and stuff. That because we, you know, when I went to park run this morning and I ran into three colleagues and I and they never there. I never see those people. <laughs> And I told him after it's like I had this thoughts coming up about what would they now think of me at work, but but they didn't see from what they. Yeah, I just told him that I had this fear coming up to about this thought. I mean, fear of being seen with a man. Yeah, yeah, with a man. Yeah, yeah, and then all of the associations that you know being feeling like, uh, you know, at work, not like how am I going to be treated now? It's fears like that coming up, but. I'm telling him that these are just my, obviously these are just my private thoughts. So I'm just telling him, expressing them to him, just to release it. Yeah, and then Francois is taking it well. He's also just saying, oh, I'm so glad you're doing that. <laughs> but yeah, it's great. I like, I really like that we have the same purpose and we join the same, uh, the same journey together. And we, like, he reinforces the right mind and stuff in me and we do both the same uh, for each other. Beautiful. So. Yeah. yeah, it's very helpful for me. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have someone to expose the private thoughts to, and then yeah, someone to encourage you when you need encouragement. Stay right-minded. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Is I feel like that's really good. Like. The same with me, I have someone to talk to my, someone about my right minded ideas. Mm -hmm. That's really yeah. nice for my for my for myself as well. So, it's helpful to have a mighty companion. To have a yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. My mighty companion. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well, thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. How many of you are following the lessons right now? The lessons, daily lessons. Okay. Maybe we end the session with uh, today's today's lesson of the course. We're in the review period now, and Jesus has instructed us to remember these ideas, not just as sentences, but really allowing them to be in our minds and come so that we can come to an experience of these ideas. 
mean? So today for morning and evening review, we have God's peace and joy are mine. Today, I will accept God's peace and joy in glad exchange for all the substitutes that I have made for happiness and peace. Today, I will accept God's peace and joy instead of all the substitutes I made. It's a good day for this acceptance. And let me be still and listen to the truth. Let my mind be still for a moment and listen to the truth. Let my own feeble voice be still and let me hear the mighty voice of truth itself assure me that I'm God's perfect son, that I'm God's perfect creation. Let me be still. So the allowance to still our mind. Release all the busy thoughts that always want to figure out something. Let go for a moment. Be still and listen to the truth. He invites us to practice every hour and every half hour. On the hour, God's peace and joy are mine. On the half hour, let me be still and listen to the truth. We can explore inside of us what that means. Just be a letting go. Letting go of busy thoughts. Letting go of figuring out something. Relaxing. Letting your heart, your being, relax. As God's plan is more peaceful than ours, more happy. His happiness. We can surrender. Go and open us to be shown what that is. Thank you all for joining us today. Have a beautiful day and night. And see you soon. <laughs> and do reach out if you want a private call with us. We're here. Okay. Bye for now. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>